In my very robust experience with getting rid of fat, losing those love handles unfortunately is pretty much the final boss. But this does actually vary from person to person and we'll talk about that in a little bit. When it comes to losing weight, there's no magic diet or certain way of eating that's gonna get you to lose weight. At the end of the day, what moves the number down on the scale is just being in a calorie deficit or burning off more calories in your day-to-day -day activities than you consume through your diet. But this video isn't gonna be a generic explanation on how to lose weight. I'm to talk about the slightly more advanced side of things and put into practical terms actually how you can get rid of your love handles assuming you already understand how weight loss fundamentally works when i first kind of got into improving my fitness and losing weight i'm not gonna lie i kind of magically expected my body to look the way i wanted to look at the end of my weight loss journey because i was putting so much effort into losing weight i naturally thought my efforts would be rewarded which is where we get to our first big problem it's pretty easy to get completely obsessed over the scale at one point, I was even basing my entire self-worth off of it. And you're on this diet that sucks ass, and all you can think about is two things. One, how great you're going to look at the end of it, and unfortunately, sometimes as a consequence, how negatively you might view how you currently look. And then two, looking forward to when you finally can eat like normal again. When I was kind of in the zone like this and almost all in on losing weight, and honestly, at a pretty unhealthy rate at times too, there was probably nothing anyone could have told me to snap me out of it because I'm honestly a super stubborn person. It was kind of this combination of those driving factors I mentioned earlier and just the fact that I thought I knew everything. Technically, I was seeing results. You know, abs are made in the kitchen and I'm going to look great when I finish my diet. Shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. And here's how that went. I mean, as you can see, I clearly lost weight. There's no question that I did put in a ton of effort and technically it did pay off. But those glaring love handles are clearly still present and I was far from looking how I actually wanted to look. I was completely burnt out of dieting at this point and I just wasn't able to keep up with eating such little food anymore. And my metabolism had the bed because I had such a low amount of muscle mass. Muscle mass. This is kind of the ding 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 light bulb moment. Of course, technically I could have just kept losing weight and eventually I probably wouldn't have love handles anymore. And yeah, technically eventually I would have also gotten a six pack if I just kept dieting. How long and how low of a weight I would have actually had to diet down to to achieve that, I honestly don't even want to know. Regardless, to get there, I pretty much would have had to spend at least a couple more months eating crumbs and lint. And on top of that, it still wouldn't have exactly been a great look. The end result would have been pretty close to what a lot of people and news outlets are putting out right now. When it comes to these GLP drugs, seeing things like Ozempic face and whatnot, I would have basically been a skeleton with a little bit of ab definition and a ton of loose skin. Now, I know you probably just want me to cut to the chase and tell you how to lose your love hand in three minutes, but hang on, I just need to give you a little bit more context so it all clicks. The problem I was battling here was actually my body composition, not the weight on the scale, which I mistakenly focused all my effort on. Body composition really boils down to two components, lean mass and fat mass. And for this video, when I talk about lean mass, I'm specifically referring to the amount of muscle mass on your body. So the real issue here was this ratio of lean mass to fat mass just wasn't ideal. My fat mass was far higher in comparison to my lean mass. So now it's like, okay, what do we do about this? How do we increase our lean mass? Well, the fastest way to go about this is to move into a caloric surplus or a bulking phase. But if you're watching a video on how to get rid of your love handles, this probably isn't what you want to hear. And if I had to guess, you probably aren't exactly in a prime position to be gaining weight. Hey, this video is brought to you by today's sponsor, me. So, uh, kind of made it awkward, but you know, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you want me to coach you, it's down there in the description. And then more importantly, I've been working on my program, which is going to release sometime around July 1st, probably on July 1st, if I had to guess. And you can put your email down below for free in the first link in the description to save 20% off on it in the first week that it drops. So the fastest route to gaining muscle is eating in a caloric surplus. That's just the fastest method. What other options do we have? Well, depending on circumstances, you can still gain some muscle mass in a caloric deficit, especially if you're newer to the gym or don't have much muscle mass on you already. On the other hand, if you do have a solid amount of muscle mass already, or you've been training for a while, odds are you aren't going to be able to gain much, if any, muscle mass while in a calorie deficit. However, what I'm going to talk about next will help you maintain your existing muscle mass and get you the best look possible while you're losing weight. And you might be wondering just a little bit right now, well, what does this have anything to do with my love handles? Well, the reason why I still had pretty pronounced love handles after I lost so much weight was because my frame 
frame and muscle mass underneath the fat were getting diminished as I was losing the weight. So the ratio of fat mass to lean mass on my body just wasn't changing favorably. When you build muscle, it kind of evens out your frame a little bit. With more lean mass, the fat mass on top of it, whether it's your love handles, your back, your arms, kind of gets like stretched out on top of it. So it seems like you have less fat. So if you had a thousand pounds of muscle on your body and 50 pounds of fat, the 50 pounds of fat would seem like nothing. And then there's also a genetic component to all of this. When it comes to losing weight, I tend to lose my fat from my face and arms first. And then my love handles and lower back fat tends to come off last, which means to truly get rid of my love handles, I actually have to diet down and get pretty lean. And again, emphasis on that idea of getting lean. It's not just the weight on the scale. Shift your mindset from viewing your body as just a number on a scale to a ratio, a balancing act or almost tug of war between your fat tissue and your muscle tissue. The goal of the game is to have the most amount of muscle tissue and the least amount of fat tissue. There's probably some of you who are thinking, I actually don't want to be that muscular. And trust me when I say this as someone who spends a little bit more time in the gym than I probably should, you are not going to get more muscular than you want to be. Like it's genuinely impossible. Building muscle is hard. You're not going to touch a dumbbell and turn into Arnold overnight. You'll see it coming from a mile away. And by a mile, I mean months or years away because that's how long it takes to build muscle. So with all of that in mind, now we can talk about what to actually practically do about this mess. Number one, little disclaimer, just keep that idea of genetics in mind here. Super important, often overlooked. You can't spot reduce fat. The way and I guess order of where your body decides to pull fat from, like the specific area the fat actually comes from when you're losing weight is completely pre-programmed based on your genetics. You absolutely need to be lifting weights consistently. Frequency is very important, especially for my ladies out there. Even if you're exhausted from your diet, looking good is hard. Lifting weights or adopting some kind of resistance training, whether you like lifting, calisthenics, or resistance bands, is going to be the signal for your body to go, hang on a second, this shit's kind of hard. Maybe I should build up some of this muscle mass. That could be a pretty good idea, I guess. And again, if you're newer to the gym, this signaling will outweigh the other end of the tug of war caused by the calorie deficit, which makes your body go, guys, I'm kind of starving. I need protein real bad to maintain all the important stuff. Hey, Wait a minute, look at this muscle tissue over here that's not even being used. Great, we can just take some from over here. So, by lifting consistently, you're providing that stimulus to your body to hold on to your muscle mass even if you're in a caloric deficit. It's absolutely crucial. I think doctors working in the field of weight loss genuinely should be prescribing resistance training to people who are trying to lose weight. And on top of just the vanity side of things, you're gonna look better, there are countless health benefits. I'm not even gonna start. I can make like a five page PowerPoint presentation on it. So, the more more muscle mass you can maintain or even gain, the better your body composition is going to be as you lose fat. Now, let's talk about protein intake. Fuck protein, by the way. Me and protein are mortal enemies. If protein didn't exist, I'd be able to eat carbs and Twinkies all day. Instead, I have to eat all healthy and like chicken breast and shit. Protein is absolutely essential in your quest to lose your love handles for good. You should aim to consume about a gram of protein per pound of body weight or bare minimum 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight. This will not only support muscle maintenance, but it'll also keep you feeling fuller for a lot longer because protein takes a lot of effort and time for your body to digest compared to other food options, which can curb some of those pesky Twinkie cravings. Think of lean sources like chicken, fish, tofu, beans, and protein shakes to help you hit your protein goal. And as I kind of hinted at earlier, protein has a higher thermic effect compared to fats and carbohydrates, meaning your body burns more calories digesting protein, which can give you just a little bit of an edge when it comes to your calories. This isn't really something you should rely on. I don't even know if it's like a measurable amount of calories that protein burns, but it is an interesting and potentially useful piece of information. Another key factor here is gonna be not having too aggressive of a calorie deficit. When you're in too big of a calorie deficit, your body is gonna be more likely to break down muscle tissue, which again is pretty counterproductive for what we're trying to do here. And a moderate deficit of about 500 to 700 calories below your maintenance intake is generally more sustainable and effective in the long run anyways. This way, you're still losing fat but preserving your muscle mass and kind of main gaining your metabolic rate. Since muscle
muscle mass is active tissue. Pound for pound, it burns a lot more calories than fat tissue does. So when you lose your precious muscle tissue that amazingly burns more calories by doing nothing, your metabolic rate is gonna get crushed, making it harder to keep the weight off in the long term. So with all this talk about lifting and resistance training, you might be wondering, well, what about cardio? Shouldn't cardio be the main focus when it comes to losing fat? Because that directly increases your energy expenditure and can put you into a bigger calorie deficit. But let's be clear, while cardio can help create your calorie deficit and it's great for your cardiovascular health, it's not the only answer. You want to take a balanced approach here, incorporating a mix of strength training and cardio. Strength training helps build and maintain muscle, which, as we've discussed, is crucial. Cardio, on the other hand, is just a tool to help you burn more calories. You should kind of view it as a bonus. I have a video where I talk all about cardio, but TLDR focus on low intensity steady state cardio. And here is one of the most overlooked aspects of your diet and training. Sleep. Poor sleep and high stress increases your cortisol levels. Cortisol can lead to extra fat storage, particularly around your midsection. So blah blah blah, try to get at least 7-8 to eight hours plus of sleep every night. The difference between people that don't sleep worth shit and people that actually get an adequate amount of sleep when it comes to body composition and muscle mass is actually so profound and sleep is so crucial that the anabolic effects are actually kind of comparable to steroids. Get good quality sleep in a cool dark room on a consistent schedule. Hydration is another often overlooked but super critical factor here. Actionable step here, drain all the oil out of your car and then try to start it. Let me know what happens in the comments. It's also pretty easy to mistake your thirst for hunger and on top of that just having a lot of water in your stomach can give you almost the illusion of feeling full and feeling like you've had a big meal. And now, the lamest part of the entire video. Consistency and patience are essential. Fat loss, especially when it comes to those annoying ass areas that come off last, like your love handles, takes time and often a lot of it. Track your progress not just by the scale, but take actual progress pictures or even videos. It'll help you not only fine tune your adjustments to diet and training, but it'll also help you keep motivated when the scale doesn't exactly change how you'd like it to. You want to build a balanced lifestyle with this over time, not make some drastic overhaul with a diet that you're going to be on for like a month or two and then completely fall off. Honestly, this is one of the most important points of the entire video. If you try to rush it, you're going to end up like me at the start of the video where I lost weight pretty quickly, but I didn't end up looking how I wanted to. The key is patience. Again, building muscle takes a long ass time. Sadly, muscle loss doesn't actually take that much time. There's no shortcuts to this, even with drugs. The Ozempic situation is a prime example. So if the video was helpful, consider subscribing. Maybe even check me out on Instagram maybe even sign up for my one-on-one -on -one coaching that's below, and maybe even put your email in the first link in the description below to get 20% off on my program when it drops on July 1st. See ya, wouldn't wanna be ya.